Thank you, Lord. Amen. Give the honor to Pastor. Amen. Amen. To the first lady. Amen. Amen. To all leaders and to everyone in their prospective places and to all the women in here that are here today. Amen. Today I have the privilege of presenting Queen Esther um, from the book of Esther. If I were to give you a text, I would give you Esther 4, 14 through 16. I'm going to read from the New Open Bible Translation in order for you to understand where I'm going. It says, Mordecai sent this reply back to Esther. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to return this answer to Mordecai. Go gather all the Jews who are present at Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Then Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. If I were to tag a title to this presentation of Esther, I would say, Our Season of Deliverance. Amen. Esther, a Hebrew name which means star. She was a Jewish orphan in what is now known as Iran, <coughs> who worked her life to save the Jews, her people, God's people, from an ancient holocaust. Because of time, I won't expound on her background as a Jewish orphan who lost both her parents at an early age, and her uncle Mordecai, who took on the responsibility to shelter, shape, and mold her character. I won't elaborate on the process she underwent to be chosen as the queen. I won't describe the extensive preparation and pampering that enhanced her outward beauty. But I will educate and equip those that are present today on her position and purpose, which was the plan of God, to bring deliverance to her and the people of God. God chose Esther. Jeremiah 1.5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, Esther, God says, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you, blessed you, set you apart, and I ordained you, designed you, predestined you to replace Queen Vashti and become the queen of King Exodus. I set you apart, separated you from people. I smeared you with my favor and empowered you with the mind to strategically strategize a plan that would bring deliverance to my people in the midst of chaos, confusion, and death. Queen Esther was positioned in the palace during the time that God knew the enemy would try to destroy the Jews. The word of God says that the weapon may form because it said it, but it said it shall not prosper. When the enemy is working round the clock, God says, I am the time clock. As a matter of fact, what God did was prepare Queen Esther for such a time as that was in the book of Esther. Queen Esther was a woman chosen from her mother's womb to bring deliverance to a people that the enemy wanted to destroy. Esther was in the king's house, and she had no idea that God would use and entrust her with an assignment that of a magnitude. Mordecai reminded Esther, yes, you are in the king's house. Yes, you are the queen. Yes, I understand that if the king has not summoned you, you cannot go into the king's courts because you might die. Yes, Queen Esther, I know it has been 30 days, and according to the law, if he has not summoned you and you enter the courts and he does not extend the golden scepter, then death is what you will find. But Queen Esther, realize this. If you don't open your mouth, if you don't get up and move in faith, if you don't make the devil out of a lie, if you don't crucify and curse the spirit of fear, and walk in the favor that I have smeared on you, if you hold your peace and you don't say anything, death will overtake you and your father's house. But you better know this, deliverance will come, even if God has to use someone else. What she said. She said, call a fast throughout the land. 
season of deliverance. Esther was positioned in the kingdom for this reason, to bring deliverance. She pleased God because she paralyzed and crucified the spirit of fear and walked in power and favor. She had a plan for the people to follow and she was productive. She did not procrastinate. She was a prayer warrior. She knew her position. She walked in power. She had a productive outcome. And when you have time, you got to read the full story. The king granted her favor that she needed to turn the table around. The same plan the enemy had to destroy her and her people, God turned it around. When your enemy tries to dig a ditch and destroy you, you better tell them you better dig too. Because the same ditch that you're digging for me, you're going to fall hard. Now how do you know it's your season? Good question. This is how you know. When the attacks of the enemy have intensified, hell has camped out at your front door trying to come in. When people are attacking your identity, the person God has called you to become. When people ignore your dreams, they P-R-E-Y on you and not pray for you. When people intentionally reject and ridicule you for utilizing your gifts, talent for the kingdom and not for their personal gain. for the impossible. God has tried you in the fire and you came out still giving him praise. When God has watched you lose everything that you have for his sake and you still didn't quit and throw on the towel. When you can worship God for who he is and not for what he can do. When God sends you confirmations to let you know your season is closer than you think. How did Queen Esther know that her season was closer than she think? Because everything that she asked what's happening for her. What do you do while you're waiting to walk in that season? Pray the word of God, which will give you power, which will release the spirit of peace, which will push you in the presence to worship, to praise the Savior because he is worthy of all the praise. That makes God smile and it pleases him. And what he in turn does, he releases to you that which you have been waiting for. Queen Esther got what she had been waiting for. She had a plan, she was productive, and she did not procrastinate. She could have did other things, but no, she had a plan for the people to follow. And when she went according to the plan of God, the things turned out just like she needed them to turn out. The people became free, and the enemy, everything he set up for them, it was turned around and used for him. The main one, Mordecai, that he wanted to bow before him, matter of fact, got the second seat next to the king. What should we pray while we're waiting? Good question. What does the word say? What is the word of God? This is what you do. Queen you have to have a plan, she did what she should have done to make sure that the people became free. So we are living in this 21st century. So what do we do while we're waiting for our season to turn? God says you pray the word. What is the word? God says there is power in life and death that lies in your tongue. God says walk by faith and not by sight. God said it's what may form against you, but it shall not prosper. God said acknowledge him in all things, and he shall direct your path, iron your path out, make it smooth, and make it straight. God says now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. And without it, he says, it is impossible to please him. He says, be anxious for nothing but everything by prayer and supplication. So you see what I'm doing? I'm simply praying the word of God. And then after you get through praying the word of God, you got to continue to say, God Daddy. And when you ask him, you have to listen to him and see what he tells you. For instance, if 